Well, I was left on this mountain. I was two years old. Old Mr. Kendall gave me food and clothes. I kicked every rock. Found this old dirt road. It's my home. I learned to make a living on moonshine skills and gold. Well, I know every ghost and soul in these hills. Every unmarked grave, every hidden still. All I've been to the top of this tree. I see my home. I got a hillbilly girl who lived down by the creek. She climbs out a window home and daddy goes to sleep. We know every back road where all the good weeds grow in our home. Sometimes you make a little money from moonshine skins and dreams. So my name's Pete, uh, Pete Power. I'm uh, in the studio recording an album right now um, called, uh, with a band name called Kids Chasing Birds. Uh, so this first song I wrote, I was living in Seattle. I'd been living in Montana for about five years uh, in a pretty remote area. And I moved to Seattle and I was working from home and I was really isolated and didn't know anyone in the city. And I went out one night to a karaoke place down the street and I met this girl and uh, we sang karaoke and danced, and uh, it was a really good time. And uh, at the end of the night, I walked her to the cab. This was before Uber and stuff. And I went home, and I uh, just got an overwhelming sadness, and I picked up my guitar and wrote this song. It's called uh, Gray Day in September. <laughs> Twirl, twirl, 
can barely remember. It was so long ago. I didn't mean to be a weird soon. I just got lost in song. And then I had one more day. And you were gone. songs, I guess, would kind of fall under the Americana country category. A um, little bit of trop rock in there. Um, in my mind, I'm a rock star, but, um, you know. I wrote this song a few years back um, after going to one of those really scary um, side of the road uh, theme parks in Orlando with my son. <laughs> So, 
might not like to tell us about the first time you performed original music in front of an art audience. I'm old. That's a long time ago. Um, long Island. Uh, long Island, I'm uh, 17, 17 years old, I guess. And uh, I'll never play that song that I played first ever again, but at the time I thought it was all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's about it. 17, one hour. Okay. Was it like a, a show, or like an open mic? It was an open mic, yeah, open mic. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Pete? Um, yeah, open mic. I had the worst stage fright, like, ever. Like, it took me years to get over it. I mean, I was just, like, it was just horrible. And, um, seeing people, like, staring at you and actually, like, paying attention to you was, like, something I was totally not used to. Yeah. And it really freaked me out, and it did for years, you know? Um, before I did get comfortable performing. Um, so that's why I'm always like nice to people when they're just starting, you know, because I know like that fear, you know. Um, um, so yeah, it was a struggle for me for sure. I'd say the same thing. I had a lot of stage fright too. Um, it was about 10 years ago before I really decided to take my music out there and try it. And I drove like three counties away so that nobody would know me because <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> and um, it was it was hard because you know when you write your songs you know you're like really burying your soul you know and so um yes it was absolutely terrifying and and i definitely drove two counties one direction and two counties the other direction for like three years until i was comfortable enough and then people around me like oh you sing i'm like oh, yeah. <laughs> so. i was not as lucky i went like five minutes from my house and i was like all right let's do this so mine was literally December 28th of 2001 was the first time I played an original song in front of people. Um, but I've been singing on stage my whole life. So that part was easy, but the, the guitar made it really like a whole new ball game. It's like, you know, the patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. So um, that's why I always find it, it's always fun to think about. Like, and for people who've been doing it a lot longer, like it's interesting right how far you've come. I mean, even for me, I'm like, wow, three years, that's a long time. Like, I've been, Done a lot in that time, so for you, I'm sure you're thinking, you know, yeah, it's you're a lot better, right? A long time. Than I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll play some more music. I think I want to hear the first one. I'd like to hear it. Say it again. I'd like to hear the one. You no, hear. you're not going to hear that. <laughs> this is cold. Uh, looks like rain. <laughs> Sitting on the tailgate of my pickup truck, Jim Beam in a solo cup. My wife is finally having off, and she looks like rain. Out here in the parking lot, a cheap motel with everything I've got. Sometimes the tears won't stop before I rain. Looks like rain, cold, dark, and gray. Every day is the same. All it looks like rain. And if someday the sun should shine, hell turns cold in your hands and mine. Just lucky you got out of time. Cause there's a place she knows where nothing grows. Barren morning, she calls my soul. Ain't got no way to go. Here comes the rain. And it looks like rain. Cold, dark, and gray. Every day is the same.
Okay, um, so I'm going to pull one out. I actually forgot about this song, and I pulled it out a couple weeks ago, and I was like, you know, I kind of like that song. Um, so this is one I wrote. I was living out in Montana, like I said before, for about five years. And I had met a girl out there, a sweet Thai girl, and, um, you know, I kind of had it made. I mean, I kind of had, like, you know, the perfect girl, and, you know, I'd go fishing, and she liked to clean the fish, and, like, cook it up and stuff, and... You know, it's the simple things, you know, that like appreciate. And, um, you know, and it was just a beautiful place out there. And yet I wasn't like content, you know, like I just, it was bad timing or something, you know, and I just, I never was able to settle down or anything. And so um, I moved on stupidly or whatever, you know, but um, so I wrote the song about her, I guess. Um, and this one's called Blackbird. Is that the Oscar artist ever painted? I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe maybe we're uh, tortured or something. We're cursed. <laughs>
That's the beautiful thing about music, you know, you can write about it, but then of course, like I said, you're like burying your soul and like everybody, it's like reading your diary, you know. Um, but uh, one thing that I found um, in this is, you know, being a woman in music, I think, is really difficult because I feel like we're held to like this unrealistic standard. Not only, you know, can we, can we get on stage and do all of our stuff, but we're also, you know, outside of that, you might be mom in it and you might be like holding down a job and some other things, of course, you're supposed to look a certain way, like all this stuff, and it's it makes it very difficult. And so, um, anyway, this song I wrote um, right before I became happily divorced, um, and it was about that struggle of trying to be that perfect thing. And I felt like in like every area of life, and it's just very difficult. This pretty girl sits at the bar. Trouble's here and not too far. Do you want to come and play with me? You say you want to know my soul. That you can make me lose control. Empty promises won't bring me to my knees. You tell me I'm pretty. Like my energy. Anything I want to hear The time tomorrow disappear Before tonight make me Yeah. 
Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh really? It was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Touched my heart. Yeah. Right, so next question. What's the hardest thing about being a songwriter? What it takes to be a songwriter. You gotta be uh, abused somewhere along the line in some way. That's what I think of it. I mean, you can't write what you don't really know. You can make up stuff. But you gotta know something and it's gotta it's gotta touch you. And sometimes things that touch you aren't aren't always the best thing. They aren't pretty. <laughs> no. So, I don't know. Get help for that. How about you, Pete? What's the hardest thing for you? Um criticism, I guess. That's something I can get work on, you know, for sure. Um I kind of walk when I get creative, like it's kind of a fine line for me between madness and creativity and I have to like walk that line and um, I kind of learned like to set it down and like not go any farther but um, um, and then when people criticize you I, I, I can go off the handle and it's not a good thing so uh, that's something I'm working on. I agree with both of you it's um I mean again I mean you're, you're showing everybody you're ugly you know, and, and you hope that they like your ugly because you hope that they identify with your ugly, but, um, you know, there's a lot of people along the way that don't like it, you know, they're going to be like, oh, I don't like the way you play guitar, or I don't like your chord progression, or I don't like your words, or you say too much, and, you know, or you shouldn't sing such sad songs, you shouldn't sing so many happy songs, you know, and it's just, all along the way, you're just kind of listening to that. Um, not to mention, there's like, no money. Pretty hard too. That's pretty hard too. Yeah. <laughs> I think just recently, more and more for me, I think um, like it's so easy now to like do this, right? Like it's easy to like not easy to be a songwriter, not that part, but but easy to like put your stuff out there. And there's so many great songwriters and so many great musicians and so many younger, prettier, um, more talented people out there, and it's like but comparing yourself to like everybody else and it's like you know what is it even worth doing like this anymore it's like am I, what am i doing <laughs> like mm -hmm. um, you know why am i still trying so damn hard to make it work um yeah it's kind of like putting yourself through abuse sometimes yeah i mean that's so kind I of how i feel about like, like sometimes i'm like why do i even yeah. do this like right. what is wrong with me and then it's like, well, I can't but like I'm so passionate about music, I can't stop. You know? I know. I, I do this. It's like I, I'm like I, I'm all in, and then the, the very next week I'm like, I don't, I'm done doing, I'm doing something else. I'm gonna. <laughs> then I'm like, no, I can't do anything else. So yeah, so I just, it's always interesting to hear everybody else. I think we probably all struggle with all the same things. <laughs> all right, let's do some more sad songs. <laughs> this is not a true story. <laughs> I wasn't there. I didn't do it. I got a story. Now listen to it. Can I ask my girlfriend? I was framed. That ain't my gun. That ain't my rope. That ain't blood. I wasn't working. Just ask my girlfriend How was framed How when she gets back We're gonna straighten out this thing Those ain't her pants That ain't her shirt That ain't her hair How was it 
Okay, so this next one's off the album I'm recording now, um, and this is going to be a solo acoustic uh, song on the album. Uh, most of the songs are like all instruments and a band kind of setup. Um, so this is one I wrote during COVID, um, and that's really what the ins inspiration was. Um, you know, I just kind of picked up guitar and I don't know, it was kind of like just free flow thoughts that just like came out, you know. This one's called The Hollow Guards. Yes, mm -hmm. 
try to reason my head and be alone in life. I was raised by darkness and it's getting dark outside. dark music. <laughs> Tim Favre is like, can't you play something happier? <laughs> I'm like, no. Um, what you think about? Huh? It's a, it's not it's wonderful. That's great. Um, <laughs> I should have worn a darker shirt. Um, there I go. So I have this rule, I think, um, because all musicians, that, well not all of us, but I would say many of us are kind of tortured in a way because we're those artists, you know, and, we live in our little boxes or whatnot, and um, like I said, I, I tried to, I tried to kind of be perfect for a while there, and it just doesn't really work out for me. And um, every once in a while, you know, I just kind of lash out, I guess, like a little child. And um, I was married to somebody who cheated on me a lot. She just kind of made me feel cruddy, you know. Just wasn't a good person. Like I said, I'm very happily divorced. And. Um, Anyway, he told me, I have four children, and he told me that nobody would ever want anything to do with me because I had four kids, and it was like a dare. I was like, oh, okay, let me, let me fix that. So, anyway, I, this is called Bad For You. See, I wondered if we got those breaks. <laughs>
very pretty too. Thank you. They're very good. Thank you. My 16 year old son really doesn't like when I do that one, so he's not here today. How would you do He figured out it was he figured out what it was about. <laughs> I have a song that just gets to it. It's not about what you think, but my kids are like gross mom. I'm like, you should know about that. Is it about tipping artists? It is. It's okay. about exact tips. Thank you. I had that same idea, but I guess I better throw that idea away. Now. You don't have to throw it away. I mean, your song will be the same as mine. It's just funny, and my my son's like, that's disgusting. I was like, I think it's funny. <laughs> A little pervert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, just because you have a dirty mind. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. How many of us. I'm like, Pete, your questions are up, dude. So, this next question is How did you get started writing songs? Tom's like, I don't remember. I do, actually. Uh, I used to just uh, write little stories. I was always a little writer, and uh, turned it into that. I, I really don't know how, when it happened. I just know I used to like write little dumb stories. And figured maybe I can make songs out of them now, but I'm done. Yeah, I started playing like when I was a freshman in high school, guitar quit the football team and dedicated my, you know, I was that guy that locked himself in his room and played guitar all throughout high school. And um, somewhere along the lines, I just started making up my own stuff, you know, and I didn't know how to sing at that time. So I was just making up the guitar parts and playing in a band. Um, and just had a, you know, we played the high school talent show and stuff. And, um, and it wasn't really until my 30s I started singing, like going to karaoke bars and I practiced for karaoke and stuff. And uh, then the two just kind of combined, and like, you know, I could just do it. You know, it was fun. I think I've been singing and writing since I could talk. Um, but um, I never played guitar. I was a piano player, and I could not ever play and sing at the same time. It just never worked out for me. And so um, I started playing the clarinet, which really doesn't work well at all <laughs> for singing. Um, I'm, I've tried to bring it in a few times, but it's just very difficult. So um, one day I was like, I'm gonna learn to play guitar. So thank you, YouTube, um, we made it this far. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I've kind of done it forever, but the same thing, I would just always wrote poems and stories and stuff. And I think it just like clicked one day. I was like, oh man, I would love to write a song. And I was like, oh wait, this is basically a song. You just gotta put a melody to it. So. <laughs> So it's funny, so we had that conversation and when I met you at Stacey Harbor because I also played the clarinet. I was like, well, I can read music and I've been singing forever and writing forever, but I, the only instrument I played, I played the piano with this man Bowman. <laughs> and I played the clarinet and I'm like, but you can't sing and play the clarinet at the same time. And so it's so funny that we both played the clarinet. <laughs> and then I was like, I have to learn the guitar. So. I just did it like three years ago, so it's just, and mine wasn't YouTube, but it was an app. So. Plus and you also have to like write everything in B flat, which is really hard. I know, and so now we both do the, like these chords that are all like, I, I play it for the people and they're like, that's in piano chords. I'm like, well, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But I've learned, I'm better now. I use guitar chords a bit more so. Mm -hmm. All right, let's hear some more songs. Well, I'm half Irish and half Italian. I guess this came from my Irish roots. <laughs> well, she's a good wife. Takes fine care of me. I met her in Dublin by the great Irish Sea. When I walk through the door, she smiles. Oh, she loves me. Well, sometimes I drink, most times too much. I piss in her garden. She says it's good luck. When I walk through the door, her eyes shine. She loves me. And she sings Irish songs while I'm kneeling her door. I pull up a dress, give it a go. She never seen no 
but our skin and soul. She loves you. Yes, she's fine, Irish wine. Sound as a pound. A fair woman, oh, well, that's not found. She's heaven bound, fit for a crown. And she loves me. Okay, so um, this next one I'll play is going to be on the album. Uh, this is a rock song on the album, but I'll try to do it like it's a folk song. Um, so yeah, it's like it's supposed to be electric and rocking. Um, this song is about, I was thinking about um, kind of um, materialism, and um, I guess I've been hearing a lot of people talking about narcissists lately and all this stuff, and um, I guess, what do you call it? Just like using people and um, uh, stuff like that um, is what the song's about. Um, I'm, there's a word out there I'm looking for, and I can't think of what it is. Um, no, um, well, anyway, this song's called A Beautiful Thing. I think you'll probably know what it's about. What's that? I had never heard that word before until recently, and now like everybody tells me about it. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shay's still up talking to me about it. And uh, all these girls I meet are always like, yeah, my ex husband was a narcissist. You're telling me that's not your kids. So, thank God. Yeah, so this is about all, all that kind of stuff, I guess, wrapped into one. It's called a beautiful thing. <laughs> Yes. 
seeing things through the third eye. songs about you yeah. mainly like I tried to pick like I tried to do a song about like just different people in my life that were important and um, unfortunately those negative things also pop out there too since you like the whole narcissism thing <laughs> <laughs> this one's not a rock song on my own too. Yeah. so my song is kind of swifted a little here you know, it's pretty obvious like what the song is about. Um, but there's a couple of like pieces of information I like to throw out there and this is that chance I get to do that. So um, my name is Jenny Lee and uh, my ex husband married somebody named Jennifer and so she goes by Jen and, oh, wow. which is very whatever. I don't care. I don't care about that part. It's just funny, like when you call for insurance purposes, it's really difficult because they're like, Which Jenny Brown is this? You know, so oh, anyway. But Damn. Right? Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> we've been, narcissists tend to be in court a lot, and so I've been in court, for, you know, since we got divorced, basically. And uh, I don't know that it's ever going to end until I die, but that's okay. Um, but the name of the song is Baby Daddy. <laughs> oh, man. Ready for this. And Baby Daddy, think it's time we had it song. Had that come to Jesus meeting that you think that I forgot about. See, baby daddy got a couple obligations to use consideration now. Remember when you signed on that there line in exchange to come within a thousand feet? Did you think monetary was temporary? They're both far from 18. Baby Daddy And Baby Daddy think it's time that you conform Can't hide behind that uniform no more The military won't provide you sanctuary Welcome to the Fifth Circuit Court Step up to the plate and be a man, not a deadbeat. Now you've got 50,000 reasons. That's called a felony, baby daddy. And baby daddy's sick and 
tired of all the lies, the only thing that's Texas-sized here I see. Been working hard, you pinching pennies, how's it going there? You Jenny, bless your heart, say hi to the family. Indiscretions, your transgressions got you into this. The public records tell the truth and karma is a bitch, baby daddy. Before you become involved with the songwriter, yeah. yes. Have a song about that too. I'm just gonna say that I don't want to be her ex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, if you heard us, everybody's gonna know about it. Um, all right, next question: If you could perform or write a song with any artist, living or dead, who would it be? Uh, Bruce Springsteen. Ooh. Ooh. I have never thought about that before. Um, I, you know, I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a huge John Lennon fan, you know, so I, it would be fun to talk to him. Yeah. I would love to sit down and write with Lizzie Hale. I think that she would be a lot of fun. Yeah. And then I could like get that anger yeah. out there. She's really good at that. You don't need that. I'm doing it pretty well. Thanks. <laughs> I, have, I have a laundry list. I like you guys. <laughs> I have a laundry list of mine. Um, I have like some people I want to sing with, but then I have songwriters. But right now my, my top person is Lori McKenna. If you don't know who that is, she's a super awesome writer who writes for like Little Big Town and Tim McGraw. And, um, but like I love pretty much all the things she does. Um, so, yeah, that's my top one right now. But ask me tomorrow, it might be different. Mm. <laughs> All right, I was uh, sitting in Chili's one night, and, you know, and I had the pictures on the wall, and one of the pictures was a girl sitting on the back of a Cadillac with a sash on that said the Chili Queen. <coughs> and uh, I, I figured I, I can make her into a bank robber. <laughs> Well, I've done my time for Texas. Took a bus into Santa Fe. It was there I met the queen, the annual chilly day parade. She was cruising slow down Main Street, all blowing kisses and waving her hand. I pulled the driver from that Cadillac. And I headed for the Rio Grande. We were clear in New Mexico before she said a word to me. She climbed up front, kissed me on my cheek, said thank you for setting me free. She said pulling to a pawn shop. She got two dollars for a crown. And she walks on in to the Southern Trust and yells, everyone get down. She said, my name's Christina. I'm the chili queen. Put all your money in the bag. Well, I nearly fell down. Oh, I was laughing out loud, watching this beauty queen 
gone bad. Well, they grabbed the cash and laid off, get away, she said, drive slow through town. And there she was, sitting on the back seat, blowing kisses to the crowd. Yeah, her name is Christina, she's the chili queen. You may see her driving through your town. Well, take it from me, it's a sight to see a bank robber in an evening gown. Okay, so this is kind of like a joke song I wrote one night, but then I kind of like it. Um, so I always got a lot of girls in the bars asking me, like, how come I never got married and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's kind of a common question that really started coming up when I was in my 30s. Um, and now I know why. It's because I was too busy drinking. Um, and so I uh, went home from the bar one night and I picked up my guitar and I kind of answered that question everyone was asking me. And this one's called Married to My Beer. Sad story attached to it. Um, I have a really good friend that lives uh, not too far from here, and um, he's also a musician. He's way better than I am. But um, I talked him into writing a song with me one day, and I think he just wrote it with me because I like kept bugging him about it. And 
like people asked me, I would like get him on, you know, Facebook and stuff too. But um, anyway, eventually I convinced him to write a song with me. We sit down, we write this song together, and um, really, the song has a lot of regrets attached to it because uh, it's all the stuff that I missed once I had, once I got out of a relationship, or once I was about to get out of a relationship, and. Um, But it was a beautiful thing. Um, anytime it was going on, or anytime it is going on, it's, it's always been a very beautiful thing. And this is something that I really miss a lot. So, anyway, I wrote this song with a gentleman named Jeff Randall. And uh, you can find this one online, but uh, we do it as a duet. But uh, this is the original version. So normally I open the show and play for 30 minutes, but because I have no voice today, that's not what we did. So we're going to give them just a little break and I'll prompt some music, but then we'll pick back up here in, say, 10 or 15 minutes. That way, if you need to go to the restroom or whatever.
around 25. I'm sorry. <laughs> Being mad what? What did you say after that? Being mad at what?
sort of charts we had. Ten long bags of ten chocolate. It was at four o'clock in the morning on the beach. I took off all my clothes. Three dollar plastic photographs. I see the inside out. You did it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I had a big drying on my team. We kind of should have. Yeah. And I came here and I was like, I'm going to survive. I got sick. I just like to get a little bit of 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 a Jim and Flo. Shaylee and Chris. Shaylee and Chris. Eric. Oh, Eric, Eric Shaylee, Chris, Jim and Flo. And Liz and Lucas. And Kristen. It's a party. It's a party. So, I feel like when we're doing there's so few of us, we should all be on a first name basis. And first we have Tom and Pete and Jenny Lee here to uh, serenade us. All right. So um, I'm going to run out of questions because y'all let it play for a while. So let's just hear a song and we'll start back with the questions. <laughs> I'm going to need another song. It's like family feud. <laughs> Maybe we'll play a game of trivia. Are we down? Are we on? I think so. Not here. No. Oh. 
just sit it down with a break. I don't know. Uh, you want to use my guitar? this one or not. Um, this one's off the album. Um, so this is a newer song I wrote. Uh, well, it's, it's a couple years now. Um, this is what happened to the guy who was married to his parents. <laughs> Thank you. 
I really like this. This is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Alright, this next one I never put on. So I'm like kind of ruining my chords when I put it. <laughs> Alright, so um, like I said, I'm working on that one right now. It's called Songs About You. Um, I try to pick songs about everybody in my life. It's so difficult to write songs about my kids. Um, my oldest one is like the easiest one to write songs about, I guess because he's the oldest, I'm not really sure. Um, been having to fight with my daughter all day long, it's like 11. So I don't know, this song might be called something like Don't Be an Asshole. But, um, but my oldest son, he, uh, he went off to college, he decided he was going to go study religion, and I just kind of like, <laughs> he was like, what? I'm like, you're either going to be an atheist or a history teacher. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go. He works for Verizon. Um, anyway, on the phones. Uh, but when I went to uh, see him in his first semester of college, um, he was acting kind of weird. You know how it is? You can like pick up on your kids a little bit. And so I go to see him, and you know, I'm like, well, you know, what's up? And he shows up with his little girlfriend, and like, I could see this look on his face, and I knew immediately that they were married. I was like, oh, she's gonna make a good first ex wife. So, uh, anyway, um, I went back to my dad's house, and I cried and cried and cried, and I wrote this song that night. And I sent it to him when I was done with it, and, um, you know, three years later, he tells me he's never heard it, so obviously he didn't even listen to it. He probably like, I had it, and I something. So, anyway. This is for my son, Jacob. Those big brown eyes Dimple on your cheek that got me smile You go like Pillsbury The first time that I held you I never dreamt one day there would be a last But time moves on before you turn around, the years are gone. Thank God for all those pictures on our wall. I wouldn't trade a single moment of it, big or small. And it's okay to splash around, jump in puddles in the rain. Sometimes you will fall down. Dust it off and feel the pain Live every day on purpose Don't ever let them steal your joy or laughter Just be happy whatever you're after No, I won't lie That's not a fairy tale your heart will break and those you love will surely fail. I wish that I could take away the consequences for mistakes you'll make. But all these moments, they will shape you and turn you into a man. But that I'll always be proud of. Who knows when to make a stand? And though I can't always protect you. Know that I will always have your back. And it's okay to splash around, jump in puddles in the rain. Sometimes you will fall down, dust it off and feel the pain. Live every day on purpose, or never let them steal your joy or laughter. Just be happy whatever you're after. The storms will come along sometimes, it seems like every day. You won't always know exactly what to do or what to say. Believe in yourself and know that now it is your turn. And if there's only one thing that you it's okay to splash around, jumping in puddles in the rain. Sometimes you will 
don't fall down. I sit up and feel the pain of every day on purpose. I'll never lose to your joy or laughter. Just be happy, whatever you're after. He's got a few more years left till he's gone. Um, well, if he leaves, I guess. I'll take it. I know. <laughs> so, um, what's been your most memorable performance to date? Crowd? Is that what we're talking about? Oh, okay, uh, probably the Florida Folk Festival. I did that six or seven times. They're good. They're good. They're fun. Yeah, big crowds. Good people. Yeah, they're, they're probably my favorite. Yeah. Um, memorable. Yeah. I used to play. Um, an open mic when I lived out in Seattle with a band that was blowing up uh, called The Head and the Heart. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of them. Um, it became big. I heard music all over in the airport and all that kind of stuff, Starbucks. And uh, I had never seen a band blow up like that before. Um, so that was a learning experience uh, for sure. I grew up in Nashville. And it, you know, I actually went to like music school and everything. And it's funny because like, I'd never had any idea I would be a musician. Like, I, everybody in Nashville is talented. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know. Like, people have to pay to play everywhere, you know. So, like, it just never even crossed my mind. Um, but fast forward, like, 15 years, I was living in Florida, and I was, like, so ungodly awful pregnant. And I got invited to National Songwriters Festival, and I was like, well, yeah, I'm going. You know, waddling up there. And so I go, and, you, you know, you go to, like, different stages and stuff, and I, it's the end of the evening. I get to the stage, finally, and I'm just, like, clueless. I don't know who anybody is, which is probably a good thing. You know, so you're not starstruck when people are, like, walking up to you and talking to you. And there's this guy that's staring at me, and he had these glasses on and this long hair and this cowboy hat like everybody did, you know. And he just gave me the creeps, and I was like, who is that guy? You know, so I finished my song, I got off the stage, and a buddy of mine, who knows, I had no idea who it was, looks at me, and he's like, you no clue who that was, did you? And I'm like, no, not at all. He was like, that's Charlie Daniels. And I was like, no, oh, okay. <laughs> but it was just, it was a neat experience, because again, it was like everybody was, most, for the most part, everybody was just cool, and that was nice, you know, because you don't get to see that side of things, you know, and I think that we just naturally think that everybody that's a musician is just kind of a so it's nice to find out that they were I feel like every every time I play, I'm creating new memories. I feel like but it's um like I just played Sponge City this last Friday and I had somebody come up and say, Hey, I checked your stuff out two days ago and I really like your music, right? And he's like, I just wanted you to know that like I actually know who you are. <laughs> like, that was kind of cool, you know. So um I, I think it's every time you connect with somebody on another level and so I think anytime for me I've been hopeless forever so singing when somebody comes up and like oh you have a great voice I'm like cool thanks <laughs> um but now that I'm like writing music when somebody comes up and they're like the words to your song meant something that's like a whole new level of meaningfulness to me so after anytime I do that anytime I hear that it's pretty memorable. I just um, got to do the unrefined storyteller night, and that was nerve wracking. I don't get nervous much anymore, but I got really nervous for that. 
and lots of my friends came um, and heard lots of songs they've never heard before, so they were all excited about that. And now they keep requesting songs, I'm like, I don't play that song. Yes, you do. <laughs> I have one that has the F word in it, and they're like, why don't you play it? I'm like, because it has the F word in it. <laughs> I don't say it all the time. <laughs> so anyway, so that was a good one. I think that's probably my one of the top nights. Um, even though I was really nervous and don't want to do it again anytime soon. Two hours of talking about yourself is a lot of talking about yourself. You should be a narcissist right now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> this is why I'm amazing. Uh, yeah. I was more like, let me tell you about why all my songs are sad and horrible. And I'm like, it's really not this sad of a person. <laughs> I think I have like yeah. a whole album of like, this is why I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier to get inspired by sadness than happiness. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's like that's one of the times you pick up your guitar and play, you know? Yeah. Yes. After a good night of crying session. <laughs> crying session. Yeah. <laughs> I pray to you and I the same day, brother. And we both cross that river side by side. And I hope we can share the last sip of whiskey. And I hope we can watch that last sunrise. Alright, so this next one's um, one of the first songs I ever wrote that I kept. Um, and this was, I always had a problem when I was younger. I was always the guy who was the friend, you know, I was in the friend zone. Um, and uh, it really sucks. Um, and so there was a girl I really liked and had feelings for, and she wanted to be friends. Um, and things, yeah, you know, so I picked up my guitar and I wrote this song. You know, it's called Yellow Balloon. And this one's on the album with like a string section and stuff. Two 
So this is going to be, I haven't even recorded this one like really in here yet, um, but um, this one is um, kind of like being in that friend zone, you know, I feel like music's sort of like that too, I feel like we really get like strung along, you know, in music, and every time we think that we're doing really well with it, you know, something, you kind of get slapped down, or there's like criticism, or, you know, I mean, there's just so much that goes with it, it just, it's a roller coaster, it has so many ups and downs, um, but I, I get that, that whole friend zone thing and uh, so when I wrote this song I kind of had that in mind as well um, but it's just that um, you know that, that wanting something Sweet smell, yes, you're your bread, but you're kind, baby. It's 
Circles around her face, eyes of girl. But it runs where it's too late, cause she's done cast a spell. She's gonna break you into a million pieces. Now you won't ever get out. Just grab your popcorn, cause boy, you're gonna need it. So one night, mama warned you about. Or obsession, how will you love the run and chase? Never be your possession, just leave you with the taste. She's gonna break you into a million pieces. No, you won't ever get out. Just grab your popcorn, cause boy, you're gonna need it. It's the one that mama warned you about. The one they warned you about. But you'll keep coming back for more nights tonight. But you won't ever get your fill. Yeah, you keep waiting for your song in a spotlight that never comes. You know it never will. Said it never comes. You know it never will. So I used to teaching, you got your hand over there, and I'm like, there's questions? I don't have any questions. He's helping the questions stop. What questions? We have a question. Yes, the next question is, what's the best advice you've ever been given about, I mean, it could be about life in general or about this industry. You know, I mentioned Bruce Springsteen before. He gave me the best advice ever. I ended up meeting him. I was talking to him, and uh, I said, "How uh, how can you compete? You know, with, with with everybody out there? You know, I mean, it's just so much. It's so muddled. I mean, it's everybody and their mother can record now, and they do. And some of them are really horrible. And but <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, you know it. I mean, there's some people who just have no right to put that shit on Facebook or YouTube or anything else." And all it does is people who are serious, like you know us three, us four up here, it muddles the water and it just really pisses me off. I mean, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, and uh, and I, I, you know, I, I just told him I said, he, you know, you were my inspiration, and I said it's so hard to be heard. And he said, you just got to go and do it and do it and do it. And don't do it because you want the fame or money. Just do it because you really like it, because those are the ones you can tell are doing it, because they just really need to and want to do it. I'm trying to be famous, and, and that's the way I took it. It took a lot of weight off my shoulders when I wasn't trying to go out there and see, wow, who's in the audience? Who's going to discover me? Who's going to say, you're great. Oh, no, you're great. You're great. Screw that. Just, just, just do it, and that's what I'm doing. And that's that. Wow. Okay, well, yeah, I don't talk to Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> it was only one time. I am not friends with him or anything. Um, Six months, speak time. I, you know, 
trying to think if I ever got any advice from anybody. Um, you know, um, shit, what'd you tell me? <laughs> yeah, I told you a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still remember some of mine. Don't be high on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I guess um, try not, you know, there's certain things you, uh, this is my advice to myself, I guess, is um, there's certain things you can't control, you know, that are beyond your control in this world, you know, especially with music and everything else, and when you're playing with other musicians, you can't try to control the situation. I mean, if it's out of your power, um, you just gotta, you know, believe in a higher power, I guess, and not try to control it with your ego and let it get out of, you know, just get, because you can get frustrated and you can act like a jerk, you know, and I have that problem. Um, and so you kind of gotta let things go, you know, it's basically what comes down to it. I told that to you, bro. <laughs> hey, Pete, how much you love never worked a day in your life? <laughs> say that, but no. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I think be present. I, I'm pretty sure um, I have this very steadfast rule of don't date musicians um, because I think that there's only enough room in any relationship for a certain amount of crazy. I feel like I'm, I want to wear that crown. Um, so, but I did date a musician and um, that he, he really taught me a lot. And, um, but one of the big things that he really taught me was to be present. And by that, you know, um, just really kind of pointed out whenever we would go places and stuff or when I would be in the studio and, you know, it'd get really frustrating because you'd be like two, three hours into recording and then everybody's too high to do anything or everybody's too drunk to do anything, you know. And um, he just really taught me to stay focused on it. And, you know, not that I was just like out sloshing around, I think, on stage and just, but I needed to be there, you know, and it's, and what you have to say is important. That's why the people are in the room in the first place. And so, you know, be there and share what it is that you have to share. And like you said before, hopefully you do touch somebody and hopefully it means something to them. So, I have lots of these things because I have kids, so I'm constantly like looking for wisdom, I feel like, but, um, to share with them. But I think the biggest thing is it's like, um, I am, and a lot of things, but I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> um, and so starting this was like, I think I've always been one of those people where I didn't do things I wasn't good at. It was like, if I'm not good at it, it's just not my thing. I'm just not gonna do it. And um, there's a lot of times that I haven't always been like at my best, and I still do it anyway, because um, it's new and it's like, I, so I continually force myself to trying things put myself in uncomfortable situations in this i'm still not like that with everything trust me but this particular industry um and challenge myself and so what i think the best advice was that like like, like when you make a mistake or when you do something that's failure is not that doesn't that's not the end like the only way you fail at something is if you quit you don't do it at all that's the so when you make a mistake, that's just learning, right? So the only way to get better is to make mistakes. And so now I'm like, I'm gonna put myself in as many situations as possible to fuck up. <laughs> so that I can get better and be better at this because I really want to be better at it. So then I think in my, all my past life stuff is like, I'm not gonna, I'm just not gonna do it. So this is definitely challenging me in that way, so. Yes. I am a perfectionist, yeah, that's totally true, where we won't want to touch something with a sense of soul if we're not good at it. Yes. Because if we're, if we're not good at it, then it's hands down, it's in the world. But that's right. the best advice my mom gave to me, is that if you don't try and if you fail, then you really fail if you just quit something. You yeah. have to keep trying, you have to keep failing to learn. Yep. So I think I was seven years old the first time I stepped on stage and sang, and my whole life people have been like, why don't you sing? Why don't you sing? Why don't you sing? Why don't you do that for a living? And it was always in the back of my head, but someday I might try. But it was like, but what if I fail? And then like that dream, I can never say that dream is a someday, right? Um, and then all of a sudden I was like, wait, but if I don't ever do it, then I am failing. Like if I never get on the stage and do it, then what good is saying someday? So I quit saying someday like when I was 40. That's right, well, <laughs> sort of got it. 
I think there's a strategy. <laughs> All right, I'll do it some more music. <laughs> It's that song I haven't played in years. I just uh, I played it yesterday. It's like eh, it kind of sounds good. I'm kind of enjoying it. Kind of liking it. Um, and where this one came from was there was a point in time like when I when I, songs I really like that I write is when there's like multiple things going on and they all kind of like come together. I don't know if you guys have that experience where it's like it's about multiple things. So one of the things was. I was, I had started just for the heck of it, I was like, I'm going to try yoga or whatever. So I started going to yoga classes and there's that sun salute, you know? So I was thinking about that, like how people do that sun salute in yoga. And then they were having a solstice festival uh, in the next neighborhood down from me. And I went to the solstice parade where they're celebrating the sun. Um, and then, you know, I was thinking about how they do like, you know, they call people like America's sun or whatever, you know? and. Um, all this stuff, and just like there's just multiple things that always that seem to be related around the sun when I picked up my guitar and this came out. Um, and so, yeah, the song's called America's Sun, which I thought was kind of funny because I'm like, oh, people are going to think I'm like thinking the sun belongs to America or something, you know. <laughs> and that's why I didn't play it for the longest time. I'm like, oh, people are going to judge that. Like, that's so whatever the term is, you know. I mean, obviously, it belongs to everybody. Else. Um, so this song is called America's Song, and yeah, it's just like a bunch of things about the song came together, and I wrote this.
sabbatical from from real Florida and uh, I went down there uh, in 2019 I went down there and uh, it was right before like the whole shutdown thing and so when everything shut down you know it was like a big deal that we finally got to get out and do music again you know because it was like so quiet and uh, anyway I had friends that were in radio and, and and you know they're not always the most pleasant they're sometimes they're kind of harsh in their words and stuff and so um, I've been writing a lot I've done a lot of open mics and I finally asked a buddy of mine that ran a radio station and I'm like you know what is it um how are I going to radio he's like well it's like you got to write songs about drinking and drugs I'm like oh man um, just living in the key yeah. <laughs> so anyway my son brought me home the sticker and it said show me your Tito's and he was like you should write this song I'm like I'm gonna write that song so 20 minutes later, I emerged from the table with it. 
and it was my first song to ever make it on the radio. So it was those 20 minute ones, you know. Betty Beggar better, but I thought that would be a really rough song to kind of put out there. So, for those of you who just came in recently, this is our artist showcase, and these are three uh, original artists singing their original music and sharing their songs. And there's enough of you now, we maybe don't want to do first names. We did that earlier, but um, so there, they've got uh, time, I think, for hopefully one more, maybe two. Um, so, we end at five. But we're waiting not to each come back in here until we can do question time. He he has a smoking problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just told him to stop. <laughs> Sorry, you forgive me. I sound like I do. I've never smoked a day in my life. But you sound better, actually. Yeah, I do. It must, it must be the beer. <laughs> Well, my pastor once said that alcohol doesn't ever, you know, bring anything good, but I was like, I have four children. Yeah, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> I actually wasn't smoking cigarettes until recently. I'm the only person to start smoking cigarettes, like, in their 40s. Uh, I mean, I smoked when I was younger, but uh, I won't go into how I started recently, so now i got to quit them. Yeah. It's never good. It's never a good thing. I've started a lot of things after 40s. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm aging backwards. <laughs> 
all good. Um, all right, so let's go for another one. Yeah, we got time for one more, and then you know you played one. Oh yeah, that's what covers. Covers one. Right. I can say one. I was like, I think I was just thinking maybe I'll give you your favorite cover at the end, but not see. yet. Do to do one more, or do you want to read one? Let me sneak away. It's not okay. the same. Okay, we know what you're doing. <laughs> well, she left me for a carny from Give Town. He promised he'd give her the world. But the only thing she ever got from him was free tickets on the trail to Oh, whatever happened, fair window? How did he? Come between us. When did you start? Oh, I killed him tonight. And when did you learn how to cuss? Well, her fair every year came to my town. This year she worked the dump tank. Well, a hundred balls later, I still hear and it sure felt good when she sang. Oh, she left me for a carny from Kimtown. He promised he'd show her the world. But the only thing she ever been show was a million miles on the road. because the ones I have left are like real hard rock songs and we kind of got this cool vibe going, so um, I'll save those for the album. Um, so this first cover I'll do is um, The Guy I Never Met. This is Bruce Springsteen, um, which I'm a fan of. Um, this is called The Ghost of Tom Joad. And I'm actually going to thinking about including this on my album. Um, I think, you know, doing two bonus tracks that are covers. And uh, this will be one of them. Thank you. 
Next one, um, I'm just like I, I, you know, every every story's got two sides to it, I guess, or five sides or whatever. Um, but uh, this particular song is about dating over 40 because by then we're all really damaged. <laughs> um, dating me is probably like the worst thing in the world, and being married to me is probably ten times worse. Um, just why they keep the worst in the world. Wait, that was a good thing. Um, but uh, I think dating over 40 is sort of like getting on a wooden roller coaster. It looks like a lot of fun, you know? Wow, that's great. And then you get off and you like, have to go to chiropractor for like the next six months because it really, you know, they hurt like hell. So. I never said this was going to be easy. I came with a warning, not a guarantee. I told you to walk away from me. And now we both need therapy. I'm too much for you to handle question burns Let the scandal turns and conditions may apply Should be the fine print before you sign I'm not here to put on a show I won't come wrapped in a bow But I'll be a fun endeavor Those wounds won't bleed forever To say that I'm hard to please That I get bored easily So you my ride or die were you my next goodbye? Yeah. The one you won't forget is a little ecstasy followed with regret. 